Hello, welcome to another Nick Jitsu video. Today, I'm gonna to be looking at another video that I posted a few days ago, Two Tribes by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. And if you haven't watched it yet, links in the description down below. And ever since I put it up on Tinternet, I've been bombarded by an email from Mrs. Edna Scrobes, who says, Dear Nick, is that really you playing all the sounds on Two Tribes on your video? Is it live? What manner of witchcraft is it? And do you think it's a coincidence that the Cold War finished just as global warming was starting? <music> Two Tribes, my favourite Frankie Goes to Hollywood song, was released in 1984 and was produced by Trevor Horn. Everybody should know who Trevor Horn is. If you don't know, look up the name listen to all the music that he's done, it would be an injustice just to say he was one of the buggles. Don't worry if you haven't got all the media gear. If you know how to play it and you can get some effects coming out, you'll get a good, well, you'll get your version of it. What I'm playing on guitar at the very beginning is the piano part, and um, there's a string part as well. And I'll get into what extras I put in in a second. So what we're doing is we're playing on D minor, and then playing on C. I'm just keeping an overdrive sound on just now. And what I do is I play the root note of the D minor plus the triad at the top. Like that. And you notice I'm playing hybrid style. I'm playing with my pick and my, my fingers there. So my fingers are playing the G, the B and the, the E string. I'm even using my wee pinky. And can you see my nails? There you go. I'll talk about my nails another time, but there's a very specific way I do my nails. So that's the first wee part, and what you're doing is you're um, playing a little melody. So that's A, A, G, F, G, F. At the same time as a chord. You play a chord. And then I go down to the C. Now, I don't have to play the, the G in the C, the D string. What I'm doing is I'm just playing the top triad, C, uh, E, and G, and then the C on the bottom just like you would on piano, um, because I'm playing a piano part. Clever, eh? And all I'm doing here is I'm playing the melody again. So I'm playing the uh, E, E, F, E, D, E, C. So I'm playing that. Purely by accident, I decided to put a, a kind of Russian choir on there. It's a really nice sound. It's from uh, Sound Iron, and it's called Requiem Light. And I got it for another track that I'm going to be releasing on a new album, where I needed a kind of gothic choir and some Latin phrases and all that kind of thing. I'll do a, a video on it sometime, because it's a really good um, synth, and it's relatively cheap as well. <laughs> There you go. You can even do Carmina Burana all on your own. And then we get to the, the da, 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 da. And I've got that little melody, F, E, F, G. When I go down to the C, I'm playing a C sus4. Um, not because the chord is a sus4, but because the melody uh, stays on that F. But it's F, E, F, G. And then it gets to a B flat major seven. And I'm barring it because you have to play the same melody again. You have to play F, E, F, G. So I'm playing B flat, and then I'm playing A, which is the major seventh, and then I'm playing the third, which is D, and then the F at the top. And then I'm putting in the E here on the G string, back to the F on the B string, and then the G on the B string. This is one of my favourite parts of the tune, actually. I really like this kind of contrary motion thing. So I'm playing an open A on the open A string, as it happens. And then I'm playing D and then C on the top string. Then I'll play a B flat on the E string and then an A and then a G on the B string. And then I'll play a D with a grand gesture. Move my arms around. That's a cue for the drummer to wait to count it off 
before uh, so I can change sounds. That then brings me to from two tribes piano to two tribes strings. I forgot what it was called for a minute. Now this is based more on the ver more on. This is based more on. This is based more on the live version, um, which I'll do a link to below. Uh, when our singer Barry from the Lee Aaron band, not that Lee Aaron, um, decided he wanted to do it, he wanted to do this version. And uh, I said, but there's loads of strings and stuff in it. And he just went, ah, don't let that worry you. It took a lot of working out to work this one out. So let's start with just the guitar part. <laughs> On my version, I use Overdrive from the, the Amp 1, the Blue Guitar Amp 1. Great amp. And uh, I play the riff ever so slightly differently. Uh, I play it like that because that's what the strings actually play on that live version. And I have to make quite a lot of compromises when I'm putting a, a part together because um, I'm playing so many instruments at the same time. You've got that little riff going on and that's fairly easy really it's like a metal riff um, you're just playing a, a g to an a on the d string but hammering it on and then playing playing two a's and then playing an open d and then i'm going back to the a again and then repeating and then the very last time I'm playing on the G, I'm playing C, B, and then A, G. Yeah, finishing on the G. There you go. But what I try and do you can hear that you get that So I'm muting that keeping that more subdued, which which kind of gives it more impact and more dynamics. I play a couple of times on my own. And then I'll bring in uh, an organ sound and a string sound. Like that, and play it a couple of times with that. The organ's just a stock organ that's in uh, Logic. It's one of the B3 organs. And I use my Garatan strings, the Garatan Personal Orchestra 5, I do believe. Um, because I tried other string samples, I tried all my Spitfire stuff, but they wouldn't fire quick enough um, and didn't have the same articulation as the, the Garatan ones. Um, and Garatan is a really cheap orchestra. I did my first concerto on it, my guitar concerto, that you can find on my first solo album called Solo, with the question mark on it. And that entire album is all played on guitar. That was my first kind of foray in the world of MIDI guitar. This is where the fun begins. You've got guitar, strings and organ going all at the same time. And then you've got to bring in a pad underneath that. And it took me nearly a month to work out how to get this pad going. And I hope you're sitting down for this because this, this is quite complicated. What I do is I hit the function button on my FB3 Line 6 pedal board. No hands! You hear that? So what I've done is I've set up a drone in main stage and the drone comes from a script that I got from uh, following a Sunday worship site and again I'll put the link in the description before, uh, below. There's loads and loads of resources um, and videos and things like that that um, teach you all the aspects of main stage and all the little hidden secrets. And one of the little hidden secrets is a thing called Scripter. And somebody's written a script that makes a drone. You get to choose the note of the drone. And what I've done is I've chosen the note of D. And then you go into the MIDI effects in main stage and you add the chordal trigger. Whenever I trigger the drone that's on D, it will trigger the chord of D minor 7. So there's two chords in, in two tribes that you need. You need the D minor 7 and you need an E minor 7. How do I get the drone to do a, another, to go up to E minor 7? I could put in another drone, but then that's 
the the footwork involved in that was mental. And remembering where it is in the heat of battle when you're kind of working out, you know, what sound you're on, what instrument you're playing. You've got lights going at you from all directions. A singer over there, a drummer kind of... Aah! The whole thing's just like too much for my tiny little brain. So what I did was I set up the drone on, on one pedal and then I've got a pitch shifter on another pedal that goes up uh, a tone and just takes the whole chord from D minor 7 to E minor 7. And then when I take my foot off, it goes back to D minor 7 again. So it kind of sounds like this. So D minor, E minor 7. So that's, that's what I'm playing with everything going at the same time. Now I need that switch to happen between D minor and E minor when I go up to the next section. On that live version you hear the strings kick in an octave above and the guitar as well. And the notes are the same. The way I play it is slightly different. So all I'm doing is I'm just playing a G, A, 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 D. But I'm actually playing every note. I'm playing every note this time because when I'm playing the strings, I need the strings to cut through and be articulate. So, and then it goes up to that C, B, A, G. So when you put that together, what you get is this. When you've got string patches, you've got short articulations and you've got long articulations. You get the, the articulation from the staccato patch and then you get the kind of uh, blossom from the, legato, from the legato patch that sits underneath it. I've got a staccato viola patch. And if you add violas to violins, you get a much more natural sounding string part rather than just violins on their own. The original was actually, I think they wrote it about 1981 or 1982. And there's an original version that you can find on Tinternet. And it's um, from the 1982 Peel sessions. John Peel was a, a really well-known DJ at the time. And he, he was a big champion of up-and-coming bands and is greatly missed. So that original 1982 version that was on the Peel Sessions um, is a lot faster, has a lot more energy to it. And um, it's funny, it all almost to me could be like a Van Halen song. It might be fun to do a Van Halen version of that if I can find the right singer. Dave Lee Roth, you busy? So on to the bridge part. Uh, this is the on-the-air America bit, I think. Um, I don't really listen to the lyrics. Um, they're not that relevant unless there's a guitar solo around them. What we've got... Again, I've kind of adapted this a little bit just because I'm doing it so much. Um, all I'm doing for take a sense. So I'm quite aggressive with the old F, which is just F, C, F, because that's where you want the, the, the instruments to poke out, the strings to really dig in. And the organ comes in a little bit more as well. So the second half is much the same. You're playing G and A on the E string, and then you're playing C on the A string, and then you play a G on the D string. You go up to a G, and then you play an open D, you just sneak that in as a sneaky little kind of cheeky D, and then F on the, the third fret of the D string, and then when you play the E, you actually play an E power chord, which is E, B, and E. Like that. That would be too easy to put all that together, wouldn't it? There's another slight complication in that we've still got the drone going on underneath. So what I'm doing is I'm playing the, the D minor 7 drone under the F part, and then under the E part, I'm going to play the E minor 7 part. So what you get is this. 
There's the drone. There we go. Cool, eh? You do that a few times, and then you do the F version. You go straight to an E, and then straight to a D power chord, which is D, A, and D. Dad. Ha! Hello, Dad. So you get... Like that. And what I'm doing is, is halfway through that D chord, I switch the drone off, and then we go back to the riff again. In that octave. And then you've got to remember to switch the drone back on when you go back into the second verse. There you go. And then, during the second verse, all number of shenanigans begin. Uh, with your feet and your hands and whatever else you can dingle dangle. Um, we get the riff a couple of times, then I get two chords. What I'm playing is the top part of a D minor seven chord. Uh, so I'm, but I'm focusing on the C, F, and the A, and then going up to the kind of middle part of an E minor chord, uh, E minor seven chord, which would be the D, the G, and the B, and then back to the D minor seven again. But I'm doing the same in the drone as well. So you get that. And what I do is I switch off the strings and the organ and then just have the drone on and then I do this little guitar figure. And it's quite simple. It's a little bit different from the record again because I'm just doing so many other things. All I'm doing here is I'm just playing um, playing a G, A, and a C. So G and A on the D string, C on the, the G. Then going up and doing exactly the same shape, but on the 12th fret, so I'm playing D and E, and then G. Same strings. And then doing more or less the same thing. I'm starting on the G the next time on the G string and playing G, A, and then C on the B string. And then back to the original kind of pattern, uh, but on the B string and I'm playing C, D, and then F on the E and playing the D on the B string. And then we're back to... While I'm doing that though, I've got the drone going on. So I've got to remember and change the drone at the right part. So with the drone, without the strings and the organ, Sounds like this. You kind of go one, two, three, four. Like that. And I'll hit that E again on that last chord. E boom ba ba da da da. But when I'm playing it that time round, I'm only playing it with a drone and the guitar, and then halfway through I kick in the strings and the organ. So it's like a dance step. So off, move, back, and uh, back on again. This is where my version of MIDI guitar playing um, keeps me quite literally on my toes. So if you survived this bit so far, um, you then have kind of, it's like a three bar, one, two, three. It's like one extra bar. Then we move on to this weird middle section, which reminds me of the old Roger Ramjet theme tune. And, um, what we end up playing is almost like playing a nursery rhyme. Um, I'm playing in this um, uh, short strings, long strings, piccolo and flute, and xylophone, um, and guitar. Um, it's 
So what you're playing is you're playing F sharp G, uh, F sharp to E on the G string, and then back to F sharp on the B, and then E, and then D on the G. Then you kind of go up in order, D, E, F sharp, and then kind of play the same thing again. Uh, G, F sharp, back to E on the G string, and then you do the answer phrase, which goes up the way, F sharp, G, and A. And then you do the same thing again that you did before, and then you kind of do another answer phrase, which is just uh, going up from the D, 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 E, F sharp, and then G, F sharp. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's what it does on the record, I think. I think that's what they do. And I've got a tendency to do... And almost want to finish it with a... But there you go. Um, then all you do is you take that... And then you move it up 12 frets and do exactly the same thing. The piccolo isn't being played in the first octave. It's being played in the second octave. So it's another little trick. You can orchestrate how your instruments are going to be played live by placing certain instruments in certain octaves so that when you change octave, it sounds like the instrumentation has changed, which it has, but you haven't changed. You're still the same person, and we all love you for it. Then we go back to the strings patch, and we get kind of the second half of the middle eight. And it's just that D minor chord again, the, the D minor seven with the, the C, the F, and the A. And then this little figure. And all you're doing there is you're kind of playing, um, you're hinting at a C sus four. You're playing the notes of F on the E string, then E on the E string, and then C on the B string. And then I'm playing that uh, E minor chord, which is the um, D, G, and B. The second time round I do that, I put on the drone and I do exactly the same thing. And then there's four stabs, one, two, three, four, and then you're back to this riff again. And then there's a little kind of figure in the middle of that. And what I should do is stick on some brass at this point, but I just run out of feet. But the, the figure that you should be playing is... All I'm doing there is I'm playing A, G, A, and then I'm playing a D power chord backwards, D, A, D. So D on the B, A on the G, and then D on the D. Like that. But I play it slightly uh, harder. What I'll also do is I'll put on my T-Rex Molar Overdrive. That just kind of lifts the sound a little bit. As opposed to... When I put the Molar on, the guitar then goes bing out to the front and then comes back in again and becomes uh, one with the orchestra. So after that verse, you then go back to the original riff um, down an octave. <laughs> So this time, the chords are changing underneath, and what you're doing is you're playing one bar of D, one bar of E minor seven. So what you get in this part you actually get the drone shifting every every bar. And then you end on a D. At that point, um, I normally do a little dance because um, I'm a fabulous dancer, but I'm waiting for the singer to come back in with, and we're living in a world of sex and drums and repeats and strikes and high fuel costs and all the things that went on in the 70s. Uh, I think that's the lyrics anyway. I don't listen to the lyrics, like I said. But funnily enough, the minute I hear sex, 
I play a B. And then I play a C. And then you'd think I'd play a D. But I don't. I just tease you and I play a G instead. At that point, I've got to get the drone back on, but with no instruments. So the drone. <laughs> switch on all the other instruments um, oops and all I did there was I played uh, when I switch on my instruments again the strings and the organ I'm playing a D minor but it's a D minor 9 because it's got the E at the top and then go to an E minor 7, but with an E at the top. And then back to the D minor 9 again. And then up to the E minor again for four times, four stabs. And then the very last chord I play is just the D power chord. But I spread it over three octaves. So I'm playing an A and a D, then an A and a D, and then an A and a D. Like that. And what I'll normally do is I will do the old, uh, the same trick I use in jump all the time. And then I give the drummer a look, and he gives me a look, and then we go like that, and we, we finish, we end. And then we can relax, which is actually the next song that we do. And I'll do a video on that, if anybody's interested. So as you can see, it's quite an involved piece to play. Technically, it's not really that difficult, other than you do have to be quite articulate to get the string sounds working properly. And um, you've got to hit the right note with the right hardness at the right time. And that's what makes it difficult to play. That and all the feet that you've got to do, there's a lot of foot changes in, in this. Um, and they have to be done on specific beats. Um, if it was just the guitar part, it'd be so easy. But then all the stuff I play in the Lee Aaron band and various other bands would be so easy if it was just guitar I was playing. And to be quite honest, I get bored very easily when I'm playing pop stuff. This gives me the, that kind of extra little challenge. And it also cuts down the numbers in the band so we get paid more. The other thing that makes this song possible to play live is the Line 6 FBV3. Since I've got that and got to grips with it, that's been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I'll do another video on that if anybody's interested, because that's a that's been a bit of a game changer, that one. So my guitar sound live is relatively simple um, compared to all the synth side of it. It kind of has to be. What I've got in the guitar sound is I've got um, a wet dry rig, and the, the dry part is the blue guitar amp one, and that goes out the Black Star speaker cabinet. That's a dry signal, but with a 16th note delay on it like a really kind of short delay. And then on the other side, it goes into a Palmer power amp, and then that goes to a CL80 cabinet, and that's my wet effects. One, two, uh, two. So that's a quarter note delay. So when you get the two and you start playing the whole thing together, it's a much bigger sound, it's a massive sound. And you get that... Um, Like that and you can hear the echo going on there's also um chorus going on on one of the speakers i can't remember which side i've put everything on if you want to see the full version of two tribes like i said at the beginning i'll put the put a link below uh, that is me playing live all i've done is i've put in a, a bass part and a drum part and that's it everything else is played live just like i've shown you um, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and all that kind of thing. Type of real, my album is out. There's a new album coming out shortly that's more synth based and quite different to what I normally do. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. And from me and from whatever part of a hippopotami this is made from, Slan Chava. See you on the next one. So that, that Protect and Survive was quite brutal when we were kids. They should have done a kiddies version of it, you know, a kind of...
Hello kiddies. Today we're going to learn how to protect and survive. If you hear a massive bang outside, followed by a huge flash, don't worry, it's just the grown-ups having a nuclear war. If you haven't been burned to a twiglet, get all your furniture, stick it in a big pile, and with the rest of your family, hide underneath it. If your grand dies, don't forget to put her in a bag and leave her outside for the refuse collectors. Just make sure it's not a plastic bag because that's bad for the environment. Stay under your furniture for at least two weeks for the radiation to subside. Then you can come out, eat your family pets, and then you're either going to die of radiation or die from malnutrition because there'll be no food. Sleep tight, kiddies.